Thursday marks one year since the deadly insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. President Biden plans to address the nation from where the violence occurred. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes has more on what to expect. Lana, the January 6th attack changed this city possibly forever. And in a speech at the U.S. Capitol to mark the anniversary, President Biden is going to lay the blame for that attack squarely at the feet of his predecessor, Donald Trump. According to the White House, President Biden will lay out the, quote, singular responsibility President Trump has for the chaos and carnage that we saw one year ago. They tell us he will also call out Mr. Trump for misleading his own supporters to this day about who won the election. White House aides argue that lies like that don't just rile people up, as we saw last January, but they argue those lies also fly in the face of our democratic system and pose ongoing peril to the rule of law. Lana? All right, Nancy, thank you. In the year since that violent attack on our nation's capital, hundreds of people have been arrested, charged, and sentenced for their role in the assault. CBS News' chief national affairs and justice correspondent, Jeff Begays, has more on where we stand today, starting with a look back at how the violence first unfolded. Last January 5th, this hooded and masked person roamed Capitol Hill, planting bombs near the Democratic and Republican National Committee headquarters. A year later, still no arrest. Correct. The bombs were disabled before they exploded. But Steve Dantuano, the FBI's lead agent in Washington, says that they were made to be lethal. Were, they, were these devices viable? Oh, absolutely. They were definitely viable. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, were, they could have exploded. So they, they could have killed them. people. No, they, they could have done serious physical injury or death. To identify the bomber, investigators have conducted over 900 interviews and scoured 39,000 video files. They've tracked much of the bomber's route, just blocks from the U.S. Capitol. We believe the individual could have been operating out of this park or the vicinity of this park. The FBI is still asking for the public's help. Why has it been so difficult tracking this person down? The individual was covered from head to toe. Hoodie on, glasses, mask, um, gloves. Do you know if this is a man or a woman? We do not know that. That attack on the Capitol itself has resulted in more than 725 arrests, 225 people for assaulting, resisting, or impeding officers, and over 75 people for using a deadly or dangerous weapon. But the FBI is still looking for 250 people believed to have committed acts of violence that day. Today, Attorney General Merrick Garland marked the anniversary of the attack. The Justice Department remains committed to holding all January 6 perpetrators at any level accountable under law. This is where it happened. It is. That's one of the locations where the entry was made into the building. Tom O'Connor, a former FBI counterterrorism agent, says anti-government anger remains a major concern. January 6th was the wake-up call. Do you think with all of these arrests, do you think the problem goes away? Not at all. We have to say there's more potential for violence out there. I mean, anybody who says that there isn't and that this is gone away is living in a, a dream world. A recent law enforcement bulletin said that there are no specific nor credible threats to the Capitol tomorrow. Last year, there were numerous intelligence and law enforcement failures leading up to the attack. Lana. Thank you, Jeff. For more now, I want to bring in CBS News' new congressional correspondent, Scott McFarlane. Welcome, Scott. As we heard in Jeff's piece, it was really the evening of January 5th when concerns started to turn there in Washington. That's when that suspect planted two pipe bombs on Capitol Hill. And authorities say there still haven't been any arrests for those bombs. Does this raise concerns for the FBI? Yeah, Lana, it's striking. It's noteworthy. The FBI is talking about an unsolved case like this. One year later, they've gotten tips, they've posted videos and maps, they've offered a $100,000 reward, and still, no announced suspects, no announced arrests. It's worth noting, this isn't just near the Capitol, the images you're watching. This is in a neighborhood with restaurants, with families, schools, 
playgrounds, and in a vacuum, aside from the rest of January 6th, Lana, active, destructive pipe bombs were placed on Capitol Hill, and 12 months later, they don't know who did it. Yeah, uh, it's a very good point. That that's a residential area that uh, that there are so many families, young children. Um, and, uh, Scott, there's also been a number of court hearings uh, that are also going to come involving those who stormed the Capitol. One is actually scheduled for Thursday at the exact hour that the rioting began. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, how about that? The one-year anniversary, there are high-level defendants appearing in court for what happened January 6, 2021. First of all, at the same time President Biden will speak outside the Capitol tomorrow, there'll be a hearing down the road at the D.C. federal courthouse for an accused Oath Keeper Conspirator, one of the nearly two dozen defendants accused of plotting and planning ahead of January 6th, of coming ready for battle. Then, in the 2 p.m. hour, D.C. time, the time in January 6, 2021, where the real rioting began, a high-level defendant appears before a D.C. judge, one of the defendants, Lana, who's accused of carrying a gun on his person amid the mob. It will be a busy day in court, in addition to being a busy day of services here in Washington. Well, Attorney General Merrick Garland says that 17 defendants are currently scheduled for trial. Scott, what are the key things to watch for as those trials begin? The big thing to watch for is whether the trials happen as expected. The courthouse in D.C. is actually closed through most of this month because of COVID. There's been a backlog that formed in 2020 because of COVID, so it's really a choke point in the court. They have 700 insurrection defendants alone. This is a courthouse accustomed, Lana, to two to 300 defendants a year. So trial dates, to put it mildly, are slippery. The earliest trial is likely not until mm -hmm. April, and that could be pushed back. The 17 on the books right now are among the highest level defendants, those accused of assaulting police, Lana, or of conspiracy. Well, we've seen the Justice Department charge hundreds of rioters over the last year, and we continue to watch the congressional investigation really play out, zeroing in on allies of former President Trump. But, Scott, there's obviously still a big question on a lot of minds. Might the former president be held responsible in a legal way for that attack? Well, our CBS News team has read through the thousands and thousands of court filings in these 700-plus cases and haven't seen even a cryptic even a subtle reference to legislators, to lawmakers in any of the filed cases. What's more, there's been no allusions to government officials as being part of any of these conspiracy cases. The January 6th committee is very much investigating legislators, lawmakers, and President Trump. But those are two different spheres. The Justice Department investigation is for those on site January 6th. The January 6th committee investigating the bigger picture. But that said, the attorney general today said you didn't have to be at the Capitol January 6th to be subject to prosecution eventually. Hmm. Well, Scott McFarland, it's great to have you joining the team. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.